Hello, hello. That counts in my five minutes. Bonjour, mes amis. The Holy Spirit. Can't hear me? It's not clear that you can hear me. Okay. Can we start again? <laughs> Bonjour, mes amis. I think the Holy Spirit has a message for the United Church of Canada. Move now. C'est le temps d'agir. We have for some time been in a liminal space, that middle place right in the doorway, neither in or out, neither moving forward nor backwards. It makes perfect sense that we've been there as we reel from the collapse of the church as we knew it and as we come to terms with the tragic colonial history of which we've been a part. And we're being called lured, invited, booted out, it depends on your theology, but out of this place into a new place and a new time. The world is at a tipping point. The gap between the 1% and the 99 is growing ever wider. Our environment is under siege. Hypercapitalism is stripping away social safety nets. Concern for the common good is trivialized, if not ignored altogether. A tsunami of global refugees is clamoring for our attention. And still, First Nations peoples struggle for reconciliation reconciliation and justice. My brothers and sisters, my dears, it is time for us to pull on our big disciple panties and to refresh our engagement with the world, with our neighbors, and above all, with the stirring strength and urgency of our faith. An idea for engagement I've been thinking a lot about is how our buildings and our structures can give witness to our mission. How does what's happening inside the wall show people outside what matters to us? And how can our exteriors demonstrate what matters internally? How can the relationship between inside and outside, between in and out, be blurred so that we can be in this together? I think it's time for every congregation to Google groups wanting to make a difference and give those people a call. It's beyond time for each of us to search under potential partners in saving creation and send them a text. I'm dreaming about making our church buildings hubs common gathering places for those who are committed to God's creation, whether or not that's what they'd call it. If there's one thing we've got, it's a lot of space. And it's in those spaces where we can gather as early followers of Jesus gathered to hear another way, to mobilize for the resistance, to become a leverage for God's future. As we move out of the liminal space, we're going to have to be agile to make things up as we go along. Our restructuring is a means to an end. It has to serve us, not take up all our energy and time. We will do the work we need to do, and we need to be alert to work avoidance, to putting off any new plans until everything is settled. Waiting for perfection is an idolatry. We need to be open to the kenosis, the pouring out that we have witnessed in Jesus Christ, to be willing to give up our personal preferences for the service of the gospel, trusting in the power of the resurrection to accomplish more than we could have imagined. I watch a lot of rugby, and I've learned some things about leadership from this game. It moves at a very face pass. They run like hell. One of the most important skills is being able to read quickly the field, to use anticipatory thinking, to see where there are possibilities for making gains and to apprehend obstacles along the way and ways around them. Some people think rugby is a rough game. I often suggest they try church politics. 
I appreciate the grace and camaraderie that's practiced in rugby within and between the teams. After this match, all three of these guys would be sharing in a communion of burger and beers. I've seen firsthand how constantly the players practice, never satisfied, never sure that they couldn't do better. And I see many of those same disciplines in you, in the people of the church, in the abundant pouring out of your lives for your church and God's creation. You are an amazing people. This is an amazing church. God is not finished with us yet. If I moderator, I'll be running like hell with you toward God's future because I think that's what's being called from us at this moment when it's just possible that hope and history might rhyme. Thank you. Merci. Hi, hi. Megwitch. It gives me great delight and pleasure to welcome to the podium Reverend Jim Ball. The Spirit, she is with you. With you. I love stories. All of them teach, many inspire. This for me is one. Earlier this year, I met a man who was gentle and clear. He was an artist at a conference I was attending. He was also a person who had spent 28 years in a Tennessee prison, most of those years on death row, all for a crime he did not commit. Today, he lives with his family and divides his time between public education and painting. When asked by a reporter if he was bitter or angry about the stolen years, he replied, I worked hard to let go of those things. And in letting go, I freed myself. When we asked him to say more, he said that if he still held on to the anger, he'd still be in their prison. He wanted a life beyond bars. As I listened, I realized that he had gone deep inside. He had followed the example of the ancient Hebrews in the wilderness and Jesus after his baptism and Martin Luther King Jr. in the Birmingham jail. He had addressed those inner things that kept him from his life. He had faced the fear and hurt that damaged him and threatened to distort him further. He worked to extinguish their power and made space for healing and became freer long before prison doors opened. Now he did not do it alone, he had help, community, but the decision to make the inward journey changed him and led him to a way of being in the world that changed the conversations and people around him. And as he spoke, for me, the ground went holy. We know gospel when we encounter it. We meet it in ordinary lives, in people of every expression and distinction who are prepared to face what is difficult inside and out so that there might be love and fairness in a shared landscape. We as church would live more deeply such a gospel. For such a world, we would face 
what is daunting and hard. We would bear together the ache and stretch of reform, not just of structure, but of everything, relationships, especially our hearts. We would let go of the fear and the grief and the denial that has kept us from one another and our lives. The journey requires much, and to go farther, we are invited deeper. And in the gifts of relationship and remembrance, we will find our strength and clarity, including an understanding of our identity that is rooted deep in love, and the memory, too, that the church through time has always been renewed when it has located its life in what mattered to him. This is a time to breathe and to let go. It is a time to go deep into identity and find direction in our shaping story, to listen more carefully with respect to our neighbors and the earth, to do the work outward and inward that makes free, safe, and whole. It is a time to address with deep humility what we can and move. I met a man who embraced the discomfort and the challenge and the hope of a freedom journey. He faced fear and hurt in the strength of a remembered love. And the love lifted him and others and changed people's lives. Such a journey awaits us all. And what we need is already given. We need only trust it. Trust it. And begin again together. Bless you. God is under our feet, like the starry night sky. God is over our head, like the sun on the horizon. God is ever before, like a river runs to ocean. Our home is in God evermore. It gives me great pleasure and delight to welcome Reverend Brian Cornelius to the podium. Over the past few months and even years, I've been asked, why do I give energy to a church that is a sinking ship? Now, I wrote this speech a while ago. So I get to play with that amazing play that happened last night, and I'm good with that. A sinking ship? The question has made me think. Well, first, I realize that if it's true, I'm actually proud to go down with this ship because I'm proud of the way the United Church has embodied the Christ faith. But secondly, and much more importantly, we are not a ship. We are a people. And I have energy for a people. We are a people born of the Spirit, that same Spirit that danced in and with Jesus, a Spirit that, is a, that has a life-giving love and a Spirit that promotes and proclaims a transformative and just, compassionate society. So the question about sinking ships is really about grappling with the ongoing changes happening in our world and impacting our church and requiring us to function differently. So when thinking about that, I begin with good news. First, in spite of change, people still have spiritual longings and need. And we, as a people of faith, that is what we are about. This is the heart of our being. But secondly, and much more importantly, 
That life-giving love and that transformative vision that danced in and with Jesus, it is compelling, it is relevant, and it still rises in us. It still dances in our heart, and it is the song of our church's heart. Our challenge, our challenge in times of diminishment and even death is to know our heart and to live from our heart and to creatively share our heart. Now is the time to focus and put energy into being creative, a creativity that is prayerful and playful, that is joyful and justice-making. And this creativity includes being imaginative in support structures because creativity flourishes when it is held and held by caring and understandable processes. And so on the table is a carving from the continent of my birth, a carving I bought the year I joined the United Church. I was and am captivated by the faces looking in opposite directions and yet united. And I offer this carving as a symbol to name four things that matter in order to ground our creativity in times of organizational change. First, since we are a people, people matter. And when people matter, there is a face that looks towards the elders and connects with the spirit of our ancestors so we can receive wisdom. Wisdom like valuing the connectedness as a whole people of God, including people beyond our church. This wisdom grounds us in our call to inclusion and justice and partnership. But there's also a face that looks to our youth and connects us with the generations yet to be born. This look grounds us in our now decisions to use our resources and inheritance not simply for our own benefit, but to create a way for our youth to continue caring for the whole people of God. Second, money management matters. Jesus told stories that teach us that where our treasure is, there our hearts are. Money management is spirited. It reveals priorities. And I'm excited by proposals where there is a clarity about an inward face that nurtures our community life and an outward face that collectively engages mission and service in our world and to our earth. We need both. And third, managing money. Money mat uh, Managing change matters. Change is necessary and creative yet unsettles. There's the face of change that embraces chaos and emergence theory and does not panic. And there's the face that does the gritty work of making change happen, of systematically transforming talk into action. We need both. And finally, I join this church to dance with the uniting spirit that welcomes diversity a church that is not two-faced, but rather intentionally welcomes the spirit path of both and. I join this church because of a willingness to dance with changing times by embracing emerging th theologies and practice. And I join this church because when we step on another's foot in the dance, we can say we're sorry. I won't be part of a church that can't say sorry because at times I'm wrong and at other times I've been wronged. There is a face that shows grace and a face that receives grace because grace matters. It's core to our Christian story and it's a grace that calls us to live in truth and reconciliation. So may we dance with the Spirit, with the Spirit knowing that together on Psalm, with all our relations, we can go further. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Meg Witch. Dance with the Spirit early in the morning. Walk with the Spirit throughout the long day. Work and a hope for the new life of born. And listen to the Spirit to show you the way. Dance with the Spirit early in the morning. Walk with the Spirit throughout the long day. Work and hope for the new life of born. And listen to the Spirit to show you the way. It gives me great pleasure and delight to welcome Reverend Bill Thomas to the podium. One of the first sermons I ever preached, first church I ever served, was on evangelism. Little did I know at that point that evangelism was a four-letter word in our church. 
People cringed at the idea. I've preached in every, I preached a similar sermon in every church I've served. And I know why people cringe. Recently, I was in Toronto walking down uh, Young Street outside of the, the Eaton Center, and someone was standing on the corner. I was, I was walking with my wife and, my, and three of my children, and this person looked at us and said, have you been saved? Have you been washed in the blood? And I went, oh my God. And then he, this man looked at my daughter. My, our, our children don't really look, well, traditional. And, and Fiona was wearing a Superman t-shirt, and he said, what about you, Superboy? Are you saved? Do you think Superman's going to come and save you? Anyway, I turned to him and I said, how's that working for you? <laughs> and then we got into a conversation, a little bit of a conversation back and forth, and finally my son Liam comes over to me and he says, Dad, like, let's just go. We looked like, you know, too, well, we didn't look too enticing. <laughs> but evangelism does not have to be that. And in the United Church, we need to evangelize. The question is, what's the message we are bringing? We are not the church that stands on the corner and judges every person that walks by because their color is the wrong color, or their hair is the wrong color, they've got too many piercings, they're not wearing the right clothes, they're holding hands with the wrong person. That is not us. We are a church that has a different understanding of the gospel, and it is an understanding of the gospel that is worth communicating. It's an understanding of the gospel that is different, so different, that it impacts the world. And if we don't believe that, if we don't believe that, ask Johnson or Marilia or Karen or any one of the other partners who were up on this stage about how we relate to our partners. If we don't believe that, ask the, the young people, the, the youth, the, the old people who are now able to come into a church with the partner of their choice and hold hands and be physical and be exuberant in the love they have for each other. If we don't believe that, ask the homeless in the downtown churches who come in for a place to sit, to eat, to drink, and to pray. We are a church that does not have to worry about a bench in front of our building that has a Jesus that is wrapped in, a, in newspapers or in a blanket that we don't like and shows the holes in the feet. We are not a church that has to be afraid of that because we are a church that can embrace that. That is the Jesus that we know. And that is the Jesus that we love. We need to take this message out into the world and not be afraid to evangelize, to share the good news, to open up hearts to the gospel, hearts that have been afraid of the gospel. We are a church that has a message counter to the guy on the street corner, counter to the judgment that is offered to my son and my daughter, counter to those who want to express themselves in a variety of ways. And that is a message that is worth sharing. It's a message we have an obligation to take that message out because it is unique in many ways to us. And if we don't take that message into the places that it needs to be heard, then we have failed. But if we take the message into those places, delivering it to all peoples, then we truly walk a path towards reconciliation with First Nations brothers and sisters, but with the gay and lesbian community, 
the trans community. We are going to be talking about those kinds of initiatives because they are United Church. They are ours. It is gospel. And it is our amen. shout that the God of my heart is great and my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait you fixed your sight on your servant's plight and my weakness you did not spurn so from east to west shall my son be blessed could the world be about to turn 